Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Glad to come together with you again today, this Sunday morning. Uh, as always, I try to encourage each and every one of us, if we can, providentially speaking, to go to church in accordance with God's word, uh, to be with other Christians. And as important as it is to be in a community of other believers, today I'm going to speak about how important it is also to be alone with God. I was going through the thought for the day in Malachi chapter 3, and as I came to verse 3, it speaks about how God acts as a refiner, um, purifying the sons of Levi as silver and gold gets purified and refined. And this happens, as it says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 3, so that the people can present sacrifices in righteousness. In order to get right with God, oftentimes, God will cause us to go through some difficult times in our life where we'll often be alone. But that's where God does his best work often. Um, in Mark chapter 7, verse 33, we read that when Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was going to heal a deaf man, he took him away from the crowd to be alone with him. When we're told to pray, oftentimes Christ told us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, to get away, just go into your inner closet and pray to your father alone. And something that Christ did himself throughout the Gospels, you could read in Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 35, Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Look at those passages of Scripture where it's repeated often where Jesus Christ got alone to be with his father in prayer, often in a mountain, and spent the whole night with him. I come out here in this wooded area not too far from where I live and I spend some time doing this devotional video. I get off the air and I spend some time out here in prayer, interceding in prayer for others, uh, interceding in prayer for unsaved loved ones, uh, government officials, for the church. I bring my, uh, my own request to the Lord. I say this because the Bible is very clear in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. The world has a saying, the wheel that squeaks the most gets the most oil. In other words, those who yell the most, those you see protest the most and scream the most. You see a lot of these protesters screaming for justice and thinking that they're going to get their way by destroying other people's property and screaming and yelling. They might get what they want in a temporary sense, but we're not called as Christians to live like that because... Our example to follow is not the world, but Jesus Christ. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, I often remind myself of this scripture verse personally, personally in my own life. Because in my flesh, when uh, somebody does something wrong to me, my reaction is to hit right back. But we're told in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, that when Christ was reviled, he did not revile back. When people threw insults at him, he didn't throw insults back. He stayed quiet and gentle. We read in Isaiah chapter 53, the messianic chapter uh, in the Old Testament that was predicting the coming of Christ and the life that he would live. He would sacrifice himself for others. He would present himself like a lamb presented before God to be sacrificed. When he comes again, yes, he's going to come as a lion. He's not going to come as a lamb. But Christ set us the example while we're here on earth to follow him when he was on this earth, that he didn't add insult to insult when somebody did something wrong to him. He didn't go tit for tat with them. No, he remained quiet. He was a gentle man. Yes, there were a couple of times we could read in Matthew chapter 21, verse 12 and John chapter 2, verse 15, where twice when Christ went into his father's house, the temple and saw that they were selling merchandise and his father's house had become a place of uh, money and, and uh, scandal that he threw everything all over the place and he went angry. He got angry and there is a righteous anger. Yes, Christ at that time because his father's house was precious to him. He had zeal for his father's house and he saw what was being done. But other than that, our Savior set an example for us to live where, yes, we can be angry at times when things are going on in this world that we don't like, but we should be gentle, humble, meek. This is what I've learned in my own personal life. When I get alone with God, it teaches me humility. 
gentleness, peace that I can have with myself, with God first and foremost, and with others, getting away from the noise. I could oftentimes as a Christian, and I confess this, when I'm reading the Bible, um, as soon as I'm done, I have to put on some Christian music or listen to a sermon. And I often say this, there's nothing wrong with these things, but we don't need to hear noise all the time. Oftentimes when we're, when we're alone in our house, like say if my wife is out working and I have different hours than her and my kids, they're getting older now, they're out in the world and it's the empty nest. Can you still have that peace and that stillness before God and, and within yourself? Not having happen to hear, you don't happen to have to hear noise. You don't have to hear uh, uh, the radio. You don't have to hear the TV. You could just have that stillness before God, as Psalm 46, verse 10 tells us. Be still and know that I am God. My friends, I am not talking at you, but with you. This is something I'm still learning in my life, many years after I've been saved, and even as I'm getting older, to be still and know that he is God, to meditate, not just read the word of God or study the word of God, but to meditate on it. And to pray the word of God. Get alone sometimes. I go for walks more now in my neighborhood where I live. And when I have some free time. And just for a few minutes, just get out and pray to God. And, and talk to him uh, as I would talk to a friend about what's going on. And oftentimes, I remember when we were younger and I was in a 12-step program. They would teach us to be careful of codependent relationships. Oftentimes, when you were getting off of drugs or alcohol... You will look to a woman or a woman will look to a guy and they will become codependent on them and smother them too much. My friends, we don't need to smother people. and We don't need people to smother us with our problems. Yes, it's good to have a good friend that you could go to at times and talk to. Cognitive therapy is very good, even for Christians. But the first person we should go to is go to God in that quietness and that stillness. Just as Christ, as I said, set us the example he would often spend the whole night in prayer with the Father. I know it's not easy being alone. There's an old saying, an eagle, when an eagle is in the sky flying, it's free, it's healthy. But if you shove an eagle in a cage, it will die. She will die very quickly. And oftentimes when we feel like we're in a cage, we feel like we're dying inside. Loneliness can be a very powerful emotion. But my friends, you might be alone but remember, when you have God with you, you're not alone. You don't have to feel, you might feel loneliness, but you're not alone. And I hope today's devotional video will remind us of that today. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. May we be still before your presence and know that you're always with us. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all.